Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Silver in here. Thank you for coming on tonight. As normal, what I do when I come on, I try to, uh, you know, share the video. Tell people about the show. Uh, Simone, hey, good evening. How are you doing? Carla Lewis, good evening. Thank you very much. Micey, good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Uh, Silburn here, and uh, I want to wish you a wonderful, hot, summery, lovely day in the UK. It is beautiful. It is lovely. It's like Jamaica, you know. I never complain, and I will not complain about the weather. Perish your thought. I love the weather when it's hot. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, I, I believe the weather should stay as this as long as possible. Um, but I've got to water a lot of my flowers at the same time because uh, I wish there would be a little rain. But I'm not going to complain. I will not complain. I'm not British. I don't complain. I'm Jamaican, you know. And, uh, well, before I, before I, I invite uh, Gregory on. Gregory, uh, how are you? Hope you're well. I can see you there. Um, my topic today, as you can see, and let me know if you can hear me clearly. If you can hear me clearly, I would appreciate that. Yeah, my topic tonight is going to be, um, should returning residents seek private protection specialists? Right. Should they seek private protection? Right. And, uh, the reason why I choose this topic today is that I like to follow things through as much as possible. I like to follow things through whereby if I start on a topic on something, I like to look at it from different angles. And, uh, and, and, and since, the, since the passing of Mr. and Mrs. Anderson from Manchester, uh, strange, how, do, how comes I'm positioned like that? Let me see. I'm positioned in halfway. I don't know what's going on there. I'm sort of halfway on the screen. Anyhow, um, uh, that's a bit weird. Hey, Eric, good evening. Good evening. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Am I positioned in the middle? I don't know if I'm positioned in the middle. Yeah. Am I positioned to the end? I'm positioned to the end. Let me go this way. Yeah, I think I'm positioned more in the middle now. Am I positioned in the middle? Let me see. Position in the middle. Okay, well, let's go with it anyhow. So. Well, listen, wonderful, wonderful news, great news. Um, the England is through to the semifinals of the football. I watch it. I'm not a footballer, you know what I mean? Trust me, I'm not I'm not a footballer. I'm not a fanatic. I don't run up and down with these balls and stuff like that, you know. But when I came to the UK, I had to choose a team, so I chose Chelsea. And uh of course, I've been in the England and with, with the team which is playing now, um you know, there's not like a Caribbean team. There's not like a a, a, Carib a Jamaica team or so, so you just go for England. So I choose England, and I believe England is going to win the World Cup. I've been saying that. Uh, many of my skeptics and my opposers and my uh, uh, haters, <laughs> some of them, uh, say definitely England will never win. But each time they go through and people say they won't win this match, they win. They won't win this other match yesterday. Sweden was supposed to be big stuff. Uh, they did not win as well. And, and there we go. And I believe that in football, sometimes there's luck at the same time. You know, and, you know, there's a Nigerian... Um, video which is going around when a Nigerian guy said over the bar, over the bar, over the bar, over the bar, and the guy kicked the ball over the bar. So sometimes I've been saying over the bar, over the bar, and that is what is happening, you know. I think maybe what we should say in the goal, in the goal, in the goal. One of my good friends, um, um, Dwight Barrelman, Dwight said he's been actually, um, what has he been doing? Dwight has been picking teams and all the teams 
I've been losing. So Dwight said, which team should he pick? <clears throat> so I clearly said to Dwight, um, Byron man, choose Sweden. Choose Sweden as a team that you should pick. And by choosing Sweden, then in that way now, we guarantee England win. And Byron man chose Sweden and he supported Sweden yesterday. And of course, UK won. England won. So therefore, I'm going to invite Barrelman as well to um, when when we go on to the finals um, to 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 choose um, you know the semi-finals and finals to choose the, the other team as well you know um, the, another thing which I just wanted to just flag up briefly as you you I don't know if you guys followed the Brexit thing I've been on the Brexit thing for a long time ladies and gentlemen please share this video as much as possible um, that would be appreciated um, Gregory at the same time while I'm here um, just giving some brief thing if you can say hello to me Gregory. And let me see if I can find you and uh, if I can invite you on in the meantime. Um, Brexit, um, the, the Prime Minister went down to, to Chequers and the Prime Minister sort of secured some sort of um, um, deal with the cabinet members. And Brexit is Brexit. Brexit is still there. Michael Gove um, um, urging the, the Tories to, to back um, um, the Prime Minister with Brexit. And and um, he told BBC it was hope that it was a realistic move. Now, one of the things that Michael Gove said, and I'm going to see if I can actually find the video. Um, if I can find it, I'll just play it here. But I think it's important. I think we, we need to sort of understand what does that mean with Brexit. Um, and the it is. critical part of the promise that we made during the course of the referendum campaign will be outside the common agricultural policy outside the common fisheries policy over a huge swathe of our economy we will have autonomy to decide what's in our best interests we will also have a free trade agreement between the uk and the eu that will work in the interests of business will also be outside the formal legal structures of the european union we will no longer have the european court of justice having direct control over what direct. happens in this country and we will no longer have membership of the common foreign and security policy will also be outside the justice and home affairs pillar, which has been part of the EU as well. So all of these structures were outside. That's what people voted for. This honours that vote. OK, um, not my topic still not at this moment, but I'd like to sort of quickly talk about Brexit at times because Brexit is very crucial. Um, and and what they're talking about is some sort of concession has been made. And and I believe I believe very strongly concessions need to be made when it comes on to Brexit. You know, I know some people want a full hardcore Brexit, and I was also of the view Brexit is Brexit. But at the end of the day, uh, not everybody voted to leave the EU, so there's got to be some level of concession as much as possible. And I believe that is what is really happening. Uh, uh, you know, with the Prime Minister We're talking about joint jurisdiction, uh, uh, a common rule book. Um, you know. Uh, 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 a common rule book, uh, Gregory. I'm sending you a message to send, bring you up. Um, talk about facilitating customs arrangement, uh, free, free movement of people, and, uh, talk about overall aims. One, you know, so therefore, that, that's what is that mean with the whole, with the whole Brexit thing there, which, which is something which is very um, crucial. And, but as I said, I've, I've been talking about this whole thing in regards to to Jamaica. I always have to come back to Jamaica, you know, because at the end of the day, Jamaica is the land of my birth. Mr. Ochi, man, straight on to Ochi, you know. And um, and I invite my guest, which is Mr. Gregory, one side, straight out of Ochi to original Ochi, man. How are you? <laughs> yeah, how are you doing, Silvan? Great you to be here with you. I'm good, man. <laughs> yes, yes. And ladies, and ladies and gentlemen, this guy's my classmate. We went to school together in Ultras, you know what I mean? So um, I, I always say to people all the while, never, ever burn your bridges. Never, ever yeah. burn your bridges, you know? Okay. And, uh, and, and, and one of the things, one of the things sometimes when people sometimes have a go at me or something like that, my Ochi people, my original people back me, you know what I mean? No matter what. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you, man. We so, are, we are there. We're happy so, back all the time. Yeah, man. So, so once once you have your original people and back you, you know, business about nothing. You know what I'm saying? You can't really take on anything once your original people back you. You know. <laughs> but listen, Gregory. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Um, and Gregory, listen. The reason why I brought you on, um, ladies and gentlemen, Gregory is a security consultant, executive protection specialist. And uh, one of the reasons why I brought Gregory on is the government um, is saying it is planning to implement strategies and support system to bolster the security 
and safety of returning residents. If you recall recently, there was a killing of the, the Andersons and I had Percival Latouche, who was the returning resident um, chair. I've also have, uh, uh, sorry, someone say yes, me too from exchange. So uh, a, a person has come on, Gregory, to say they are from exchange as well, Eric. <laughs> so I'll pick up another <laughs> Uch man there, Eric straight from one. <laughs> yeah. And then I had um, also, uh, I, I had also um, Dwight Ross talking about the same topic as well. And um, and then I got Rupert Francis, who is the, the diaspora representative on the protection team or so. But when I had Cameron, um, Mr. Mr. Mark Cameron, um, he, he, he said something to the point that the diaspora need to protect themselves. And therefore I start to think, and when I saw that video the other day with King Harms and those atrocious things going on there, I start to think to myself, well, maybe there's a room and there's an opportunity for private security specialists to somewhat protect Jamaicans coming home. Gregory, tell me, what, what's your thoughts about the whole thing? I mean, you're in this particular field. Okay, well, as it relates to um, returning residents, yes, everybody has to take um, security measures of their own. So, I mean, if you're, if you're a returning resident and you're actually coming back from England or wherever, after 40 years, usually a lot of people would want to um, go back to where they had grown up, you know, when they were kids and yeah. stuff like that. However, what, what one must understand, you have to do a lot of um, checks and, you know, check with your family members to see if where you, you grew up is just, it's the same. Because usually things change, things change over the years, you know. So um, I yeah. would recommend returning residents to you know, take things in their own hands. And I would recommend if you're coming back to Jamaica to live, live in a gated community where it's safe, you have to think about yourself, you know. Mm. They've got to right. think about so, themselves as much I mean, as possible. They, they are, well, well, yeah, so there are measures that you as the individual can put in place, you know, and it, I mean, if necessary, then if you need protection, then you can always go with a security company if that's what you need. Yeah. Well, one, one of the things, ladies and gentlemen, what the government is uh, proposing with the Jamaica Constable Force is to implement strategies and support system to bolster the security and safety of returning residents. Uh, and as I said, the move came against the background of recent incidents of murders and other acts of violence. And talk about establishing a service to do the background checks on requests of persons who return residents wish to employ appointing liaison officer in each police division to monitor and provide returning residents with timely feedback on policing matters, establishing a point of contact for the diaspora to address specific concern about cases. Private security firms, um, Gregory, and uh, which, which is, which is, what is your firm um, that you work with? I work with Mackay Security. Mackay Security, yes. Yeah. And as a private, um, they do close protection and uh, and, um, yeah, we offer wide, we offer wide to me, what services. You? Yeah, we offer um, unarmed guards, um, canine services, um, polygraph tests, um, escort services, and um, executive protection or close protection services. Yeah, and investigative yeah. work also. Right, right. So, so therefore, I, I'll ask this question: Do you find persons from overseas? using your services uh, is there a sort of influx or or oh yeah generally? oh yes people people do from time to time use um the services of close protection or executive protection um but executive protection it's it's usually it's a niche market right and um mm. it's it's really for persons who for persons like vips um people that um are of wealth uh, high wealth capacity or people who have high yeah. profile jobs will, will use that service. Yes. So 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 therefore uh, people like within the diaspora then, you know, they're going back to some areas in Jamaica which, as you rightly say, they have never been there for forty years. They think it's the same area. It is maybe advisable for them to somewhat tap into some of the services that you have. Because you see what 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 oh, yeah. 
I, I don't want to give the impression, and, and people, I don't want people to get the impression that I'm actually um, undermining the security forces. But as one in the diaspora, many people are talking about they worry about going back home. Then it's only obvious that they are aware of different options, and and also at the same time, I always try to make this very clear that not all Jamaicans are persons who are trying to rip off people from the diaspora. I always try to make that very clear as well, you know? You know? But I want to ask you this question. <clears throat> what is the level of regulation for private security companies like yourselves? Can, can you repeat that? What is the level of regulation for companies like yourself? Because people will say, well, why can I trust them? Can they, you know, you know, can I, can I trust them as well? You know what I mean? There's all this trust well, factor, you know? Right. Well, all registered companies are regulated by the PSRA, which is a private security regulation authority. So they all come under that body yeah. and the, the, the guards have to be registered. The, the companies have to be registered. So that body, that body, that body, um, as I said, protects the companies and protects the guards. So if you, if you, if you are from overseas, you can punch in, the PSRA, and you can look up for whatever company you want to use. They're, all the companies are there. There's a listing. Mm. So, for example, you want to use McKay Security, you just punch in, and you'll you'll see McKay Security come. So you you will know that this is a re reputable company. Right, right, right. So, so, so what I'm so what I'm picking up what I'm picking up then now is people want to go back to Jamaica. People can actually tap mm. into the new sort of um, progress or so what the government is talking about which we discuss is not something which is happening as yet but it's a proposal which they're talking about. yeah right you know? right there it, it's presently being implemented as, as we speak yeah mm -hmm. well well as, as somebody says right here you know um personal security is one's own responsibility you know oh yeah that's you know the, the, the state is and and but at the same time, people are saying the state is to provide security for all its citizens. When the state fails short, each individual should take the available legal option to protect life and property. Is that where we're heading in Jamaica? Gated community this, this, you mentioned. Is that the same thing? Well, right, well, as it stands, the police, the police are doing a very good job at present, you know. But you know, you know that um we have what, what 3,000, 3 million people in Jamaica and um, the mm -hmm. police force is roughly probably about, I mean, probably about four or 5,000 police uh, members. So they're, they're quite stretched. So the security companies really do come in and play a, a, a reasonable role to, you know, to help mm -hmm. in terms of um, private security. And private security as I said, is it is used for business places. Um, as I said, when we go into protection, we, we work with the corporate business people. When they are at work, we provide their protection so they don't have to worry about security. And and you work and they work closely with the police, if anything. I mean, I, yeah, I, mean, we, I don't want to comment yeah, on this, we, but go ahead. I, I was just saying. Um, I don't want to comment on the incident with the King Alarm things recently, which was going around. But um, when we saw what happened there, we saw the King Alarm security persons. So therefore, they, they are like the first point, first port of call, isn't it? And then the police, or they take it to the right. end. Right, because th that was an armed response um, team, and they, they, they were um, assigned to that complex. So that's why they were summoned. So they, 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 they would arrive on the scene and then call the police. But I mean, it was just an unfortunate situation. I mean, King Alarm is a very um, reputable company, a good company, and they've been around for 18 years. So it just was an unfortunate situation. Yeah. Right, right. And 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 how would you have done it better? <laughs> uh, it, I mean, <laughs> you, you, you know, you know what, Silburn. I mean, I think in the heat of the moment. The guards heard a little, and I mean, they should have taken a step back and re realized that, listen, we are there to observe, and we're not there to um, mm. try and make an arrest. That, that's, that's a job for the police. So I just think it was an un unfortunate situation on the part of the guards. I, I, want, I, want to dig, I want to dig a bit deeper now into the whole psyche, because 
um, if if a government minister come to the UK, they will big up Jamaica, which they have a right to do, and I will do likewise. And they will speak of all the positives, and they'll say crime is under control, or you know we got the Zosa recently, which was taking place. Now we grew up in Jamaica for years. Um, we went to school together. Um, now from that time to now, we always know crime is there in Jamaica. Do you see it as because this is the area you're in, do you see it as something which has gone to a crisis proportion? Has it increased to a level which is like we have never seen before? Or we're exaggerating sometimes, you know, with the news? Um, you, you know what, um, Silbert, I mean, over the years, things have changed a lot. From 9-11 coming up, things have changed a lot. So security has now taken on a new lease in life. And I mean, you have, you have a lot of... Um, different things that have type of criminals that have hit Jamaica. I mean, with the deportees coming here, you have the scammers. So um, it has gotten out of control a little, whereas the, the police now have, have been trying to get it back under control. Because, you know, when the scammers came in to effect at first, the, the police, the police they, they didn't understand what was happening and how these guys used to, were able to scam these people and get all these millions of dollars from them. But now they have a, they have a team and a unit that deals with it and it's it's pretty much under control now and mm. well you well you're you're referring to the scammers yeah and, I, and no i'm just using them as an example and i'm, I'm referring to crime in general now crime in general is, is pretty low it's not it's not that bad as before it's really not it's it's it, it's control it's under control okay. right so now, as okay okay Okay. Okay. So, 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 so what, so what we're, so what we're talking about then is a, a situation whereby it is getting better. That, yeah, that's it is the getting better. The go work, it government is, is working. Better, yes. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, you'll have you know okay. like spates of little outbursts here and there, but it is getting better. Better, and the police are doing a pretty good job at it. So really, so really, so really and truly, the message then should be going out to, to Jamaicans overseas is that Jamaica is ripe and open for business. You will have incidents, of course, whereby, as you said, and as Percival Latou says, as Rupert Francis said, people have now got to think strategically as to where they go to live. Right. People have to think strategically as to who they share information with. They, they yeah. have to remember, have common remember, sense. You know, if remember, you know, Silburn, I mean, you have to remember, you know, criminals look for easy targets, right? So, I mean, if you're going to live yeah. in an isolated area and you're a returning resident, the first thing the criminal is going to say, okay, this guy is back and he's probably on a hefty pension or he has a lot of money. He's living in an isolated area. He's a target, you know? So you have to, you, as I said, you have to safeguard mm -hmm. yourself as an individual. You're, you're coming back to Jamaica to live. Do some research and say, okay, X place is a good place to live. They have a nice gated community. I'm going to purchase a home here. And you have security there at the complex. So, you know, it, it, it's better for you rather than building a large home in an isolated area and not having security, you know? Yes, yes. I, I think what someone just is saying here is, is about the whole aspect of staff. Uh, vetting of employers should be effective. People get references. The vetting of prospective staff include gardeners. So, so, so no matter how secure, um, Gregory, you guys can maybe work to protect a home, it's sometimes the people who are very close to them, isn't it? The families. Yes. The workers, it, yeah, it can be know? family members, it can be workers, right? So, you know, you have to, you have to, you have to just be very careful. Mm -hmm. All right. So let, let's let's break down. Let's break down the different the different areas. Then the different areas are the different. Um, what should I say? The different elements of the, the the service that you give. Let's talk about the first one. What what would you say is the first one that the service that you offer them? So if somebody is listening here now, and they are going to Jamaica and they are thinking about, well, I, I, I'm going up and down Jamaica and I want to know what are the services you guys can offer. What is the first one then? Well, I mean, if, if you're, you're a returning resident and you want to move around and stuff like that, we can recommend, I mean, if, if for, let's say, for example, you're somebody that likes to go out at night, we can recommend an escort service for you to take you to the venue. 
And when you're ready, you call and the escort service comes and escort you back home. That's one. Okay. Right. And um, as I said, for home, for home, for home, you have you have alarm systems that can be put in place, camera systems, you know, for the home and stuff like that. But as yes. I said before, you can't make yourself an easy target because that's what criminals criminals look for. So once you put things in place, like security measures in place, you you, you really have, don't have much problems. So that's what the, the individual has to look at first. For, they have to look at the security for themselves first and then decide what they want to use in and what area they want to go in. If they want to go executive protection or they want to have home systems or stuff like that, you know? Right. I, I, another another man just come on, Western Gallimore, another classmate from us in school days. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a, yeah, he, yeah, and he's also into security, too, you know? Yeah, I know that. I, I know that. That's why That's why I always say when I go to Jamaica, I know I can call on you guys anytime, you know, because you know, sometimes anytime. I talk too much, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, but, and 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 following following on from that, um, and what other services then are you talking about that? You mean that we offer? Yeah, yeah. yeah we so, offer, so I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm, I'm talking about. Go ahead. Sorry, go on. No, go no, ahead. I'm, I'm not, not just for returning, not just for like returning residents, but like for even someone visiting Jamaica as well. Somebody visiting Jamaica and and wanting to um to tap into things and wanting to get uh, executive protection service. All right. Um, yeah, we, we, we provide that service. That, that, and, 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 and hold on. And hold on. That's the same question someone just asking. For folks, for, for folks visiting Jamaica, can they use their service? Which is what you're saying. Yeah. Y yes, you can use the service. That, that's what we're there for. I mean, if the person wants to, you, you come and you want to spend a couple of weeks, you want to be in Negril, you want to be in Mobe, we can, we can send a close protection person with you for, for the duration of time that you're down there if you feel unsafe. Yeah. And that person will work with you until you're ready to leave the country again. Okay, okay, okay. That, that's cool. Well, um, one, one of the things, though, what I want to do is to, and Gregory, if, if you can, I mean, you know, Mackay services and say hi to Jason as well. Next time we get Jason yeah. on, is for yeah. your details or so to be to be put up because I'm I'm seeing persons are asking questions because I'm on Instagram as well. You know, persons are asking questions like when they can use the service. Now, <clears throat> you know what 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 I, what I don't want to sort of um, come across as much as possible is make it look as if it's a it's a crime zone. It's a no go area. You know. Uh, and, and I'm very careful how I actually position this particular show, you know, so it doesn't like creating this scaremonger uh, things by the yard, but it's a service, you know. Do, right. do, do you I get mean, that sometimes from people? Yeah. Can you repeat Go that? on, Gregory, sorry. No, no, I'm just, it's the same question I'm asking you. Um, not, I want you to sort of give that sort of perception or that view do people sometimes, when they hear of your service, think that, oh, things are bad at Jamaica, you know what I mean? But at the same time, your message is saying things are getting better, but you've got a service. Okay. Um, as I said, right, people that use our services, close protection services, um, are really corporate business people or VIPs that are coming to Jamaica, right? Um, for for people who are not in the business world and they probably feel unsafe, we can, as I said, we can we can recommend an escort service for them, because as I said, close protection is really is of a different magnitude, right? So we recommend close protection services for uh, high-profile business people. Um, if you have, um, if you have, if you are of a high threat or close protection service. Services, you know so I mean we can have I mean if you're just a regular person that's coming here to Jamaica we can always have an escort armed guard that travels with you to and from if you do feel unsafe but I mean right now Silburn as I said things are looking better as it stands now. yeah for, for, you know over the last couple of years it was it was getting out of control but it is now better yeah because 
Dean, Dean, Dean McCowan from New York, he says, I'm from New York and I'm really considering protection and a gated community for me and my family. You know, um, Weston Gallimore just said as well that the, the security companies like yourselves can also do background checks. So you don't have to wait for the police as well, isn't it? Right. We also, yeah, we, uh, most of the companies, we do background checks. Once you, you request it, we can provide background checks for you. So that can be on your workers, yeah. you, you know. Right. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, I guess what, what Gregory is saying, and this is some key information, I want to make it a snap and a very sharp sort of discussion whereby one can actually utilize these sort of services whereby you can do checks on persons that you want to work with. The government is going to provide a service with the police and a liaison person, but security companies like Gregory Marquis can also do that as well. That is something which... which um, uh, what's his name is saying. Uh, the, the, Dean McGowan says, and I don't know if you know this one, how does Jamaica keep track of the deportation of the criminal? Not just deportees, but the criminals. How do they, I don't know if you got that information. Well, the, 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 the Jamaica Constabulary Force has a, a system in place that they do track them and they do report to um, the police station every couple of days. So that's how they keep track of them. And once they lose track of them, they will go and find them wherever they are to see what they are up to. Okay, okay. The, the other thing is about the, one of the things they talk about is NIDS, you know, this security card, this identification yeah. card, which you're talking about. And, and Western just flagged it up a while ago is that, and I agree with him, in Jamaica, only a few bad elements are causing the mayor, right? Right. And the problem of the identification is a major one, but the proposed NIDS system will ultimately take care of that. Is that your right. view as well, this NIDS? They, yes. I believe it's a bit yes. deep. I'm, I'm all for it, Silburn. I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, has been having some, it has been having some bad rap recently in the sense that people are giving out too much information um, and they want to get all this information, but you have this view that this is a good um, yeah, it's thing a good thing for Jamaica I mean, it, to fight yeah, crime. It is a good thing, and it will it will de it will deter a lot of these criminals to carry out acts that they normally do. Right, right. So, so ladies and gentlemen, the NIDS is a is a ID system what the government is rolling out, and right. the I think there's a a sort of tiff between the different political parties. You know, you know, Jace. Gregory, one of these things is that stuff like NIDS should be a sort of agreeable thing within the both sides of the political spectrum, whereby it shows that both sides are really collectively fighting crime. Do you think from the political spectrum that they are working together collectively, the, the government yeah, and the yeah. opposition? Yes, they are. But I mean, you do have some members on both sides that are not in agreement with it. However, I, as I said, I think mm. it's a good thing. And I think it needs to happen pretty soon. Okay, okay. Well, I, I guess I guess that is something that um, we, we hope to see roll through. And Western Gallimore is actually putting in some, some key points that most of the criminals are known by nicknames. and yeah. have no fixed address. Right. <laughs> so no it's hard to keep track of them. The, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So there were name like Scratchy, Josie Will, Badman Dog, <laughs> Dog Artist. <laughs> oh, right. So, so, so you'll find. You'll how, find how, would it, that... how would it? How would it work then? Can you repeat that? No, I, I was I, I was just asking how would it work if they have these crazy names, crazy crazy dog, Django Special. <laughs> An idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean. <laughs> The, the truth is told, Sidi, you, you, you have some of these people that you, you are against it that are unscrupulous. And as I said, they, they, they will, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen with it. I, I haven't been in touch with it, but I know, I did some research, right? I know that it's something good that should happen for us. And um, I hope they will implement it pretty soon. I don't know, I don't know how they're going to work with us. I don't know how they're going to work that out yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, well, that's good. That's that's very good, um, Gregory. Well, I think I think what I'm getting from this now is, 
and it's really positive. I, I believe this is really positive and uplifting because what I'm getting from this is an upbeat mentality for Jamaicans in the diaspora to really consider going back home because uh, a lot of people are actually, with one killing um, or two or three, people will say, i now go back to Jamaica. When at the same time, hundreds, thousands have resettled happily and safe in places like Mandeville. Right. Am I correct? Yeah, that's correct. And I mean, Jamaica is, is, is still good and open for business, you know, Silburn. And as I said, you can't, you can't look on mm. one or two isolated incidents and, and judge the country by that, you know. Um, crime is everywhere, right? Mm. It's just, as I said, you have to safeguard yourself. To think about what you're going to do initially before you make certain moves. And if you require security, we, there's a lot of security here in Jamaica. And is it, is it, I think Mark Shields also of a security company as well, isn't it? Former uh, British officer or so, uh, or is a consultancy he has. Mark Shields, Can I think he that? also has a security yes, firm. Yes. Yes. Mark he also Shields. Has a security firm also. So, yeah. So, so it, it, it seemed to be, it seemed to, it seemed to be a lucrative business, but um, the security business there in Jamaica. Any yes, security person can it just is. get up and open one? Um, you, so, usually you have so, people so that like come, that, coming so, from. So, so. Go ahead. No, keep talking. Sorry. No, go ahead. Greg. That's usually you have people that open firms are usually from um, JCF backgrounds or um, from the military, and you have one or two private citizens that will open their own firm that have probably done training overseas and stuff like that, like myself. Um, but it is it is a it is a lucrative business here in Jamaica. So, so, so is it a bit? So, but we don't want that lady there. We don't want that lady who was on the compound with King Arm with a gun in her hand. They said she was a police officer. She was saying, "Me shoot your boy." You know, <laughs> you know, they vet them. You know, they vet them seriously. Yeah, you know, you know, you you know, in every organization, you have um one and two bad eggs that you will have to weed out eventually. And I mean, it's as I said, it was just an unfortunate situation because I can tell that King Arm is really a good security company. Yes, yeah. I mean, from from I've been in Jamaica, I, I've known of King Alarms. King Alarms have been there for years, you know what I mean? And I know of a couple of people that King Alarms actually um, protect, you know, uh, uh, as well. And right. the quick response that they are is really good. Because sometimes the police... Oh, yeah. Yep. In anything... Sorry. Yeah. No, I was, I was just saying that they, they have done um, pretty good work over the past 18 years, you know? And I, I do... Mm -hmm like the way that they operate, you know? So as I said, um, back to what I said, it was just a really unfortunate situation with that set of um, response um, guards that, you know, to, um, conducted themselves in a disorderly yeah. manner, you know? A, a question has been asked by Kevin here, like, um, I don't know if you can give this, uh, what is the long-term cost of having security service for returning residents, but that seems, uh, I don't know if that's a question that you can answer. Uh, it all depends on the service well, that they I mean, require, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it, it would depends on the type of service they want. And um, I wouldn't want to disclose that, you know, over the air, but I mean, we have we have different yes, services. Yes. We have to sit down with the client and discuss what the client, the, the needs of the client, and then we take it from there. Yeah. Final, final couple of names and so like that, which them thinks it might be a little bother, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and Jay, Jay Benlo asked, what is the government doing to bring down the crime rate? G give us a quick summary of this Sosa to where it's at now. Is it Zosa or Sosa? The, the state of emergency Zozo. to where, where, yeah, where it is, where is, where is that now? As it means finish up. Well, they're, pre they're, they're presently um, in St. Catherine now um, because, you know, they had um, the crime rate was a little high there. So they are busy working there and conducting their operations and they're getting very good results. But, okay, okay. So, Jay, Jay Benlo, what, what the government is doing to bring down the crime rate is actually having these, these state of emergency and yeah. um, implementing yeah. different strategies. And, yeah. and as right. my colleague was saying earlier, from his perspective in the security field, 
um, he's seeing the crime going down. And and if I can reiterate for, for persons who maybe just came on, the, the government of Jamaica, through the security force, is implementing measures. Um, and I post this, this article up um, whereby they're, they're planning to have liaison persons or persons from the diaspora coming to home, uh, establishing service to background checks on request of persons who return residents wish to employ, appointing liaison officer in each police division to monitor and provide returning residents with timely feedback on policing matters, establishment of a point of contact for the diaspora to adjust specific concerns about cases. Meetings will be held regularly at the divisional level to enhance the sharing of important information. Um, and of course, Gregory has mentioned that his company also, they do uh, background checks as well, because let's face it, sometimes the police can be a bit overstretched. And, uh, yeah. and I believe that if you're going back to Jamaica, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the responsibility is also upon yourself to actually tap into the different ways or you can protect yourself with the security companies. And I, I propose to you and I submit and I, I promote McKee's security, with, which I can vouch for my good classmate, Gregory, who will, who will, who will, this guy will take care of you uh, as well. Am I correct, Gregory? That's correct, Silburn. And as I said, you know, I mean, yes. Over the years, Silburn, you know, we, we have had this um, culture of, um, you know, where people say, you know, you're an informer and, you know, yeah. it's informer's <clears throat> dead. We need, to, we need to cut that mentality out because that is one of the major reasons why we have a lot of crime because people do see a lot of things and they won't talk about it and they won't assist the police or they won't uh, assist the private security firms when they're doing their investigation <laughs> in, on um, particular jobs. So people the citizens need to speak up when there is a problem and come out and and give information yeah. so police can work and with with the citizens working along with the police crime will be drastically reduced but but you know you know it's it's a similar thing which is in the uk as well you know regarding you, you have followed my show regarding the knife crime as well with young people i, I think there's this unwritten rule this convention that they don't mm -hmm. snitch they rather to go right. to even even on another even on another gang or so. They just won't snitch. Period. Right. And and this is the whole thing. It's it's something which is inherent. How do you think and how do you see that being broken, Greg? Honestly speaking, this whole informal for dead business. Well, as I said, it it has it has changed a little, um, because a lot of people yeah. that that have been involved themselves in crime and have lost family members and stuff, they have come to realize that, listen, we need to speak up and talk. And it has been, it has changed over the years where more people are coming forward with a lot of information to help the police. So as I said, mm -hmm. crime is going down because of that, because the citizens are helping. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I think uh, in, in regards to that question, which was asked about the long-term costs, uh, a, a lady which is called Miss Wright said affordability is, is relative. It all boils down to exactly what service you need, which you also specify. Are you going to need 24-hour right. protection? Do you only need right. someone who will go to certain areas, as you say, the escort service uh, yeah. as well? <clears throat> I remember one time I was in Jamaica and I was in Kingston and I was, it was in the night and I was going somewhere and uh, I don't know a guy with me, and he said, uh, he said, uh, Mr. Cidel, I think you need to turn back. <laughs> because he knows maybe, you know, over here, you just get an address, and uh, you get a postcode, and you just drive there, you know. But when he saw where right. we were going, he, he said, I think you need to turn back. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so, so this, is, no this is the thing <laughs> about the intelligence. No go zone, exactly. And, and I yeah. think this is the intelligence that needs to be given out to, to for, so, so do you then, do you then do this? If somebody, and this is a service maybe it, it can be offered. Someone on Instagram just said, can you provide the name and contact information of a security company? Now, persons are gonna ask that question because they may want to actually, before they go down, 
maybe getting some sort of inside intelligence and information. Do you do that? Yes, we do that. We do that. Um, we, we usually yeah. ask our, um, our clients to, to send us information on their company and our, you know, on their background so we can um, therefore check them out before they do come here. Um, likewise, if they want to check right. us out, we do have our website that they can go in and, and, and view our website also. Okay, okay. Um, Gregory, will you will you post your, your details here or you give it to me and I post it here? Which, which one? Because I'm going to have to put it on Instagram as well so persons can actually... Is that okay or so? Or is it, or is it sure, too secure? Sure. Is it MI5 or GCA? No, no, you can't post it. Is, is it, is it secret like secret? secret. <laughs> No, you can't. Post. I can post it. Okay, so yeah. I get that. Yeah. Is there anything else? Is there anything else you want to say, um, Gregory, before we go? Any last word or any sort of key tips that I may have missed out? Um, as I say, you know, Silburn, when it relates, as it relates to security and um, crime in Jamaica, I would say for anybody that's coming here, don't feel afraid to come. You know, and Jamaica is a very wonderful place. And as I said, you just need to safeguard yourself like anywhere else in the world you go. Every, everywhere, everywhere in the world has some, you know, some form of security risk. So when you come into Jamaica, just, just, just safeguard yourself. If you feel like you feel the need for private security, you can always call. Right. So, so ladies and gentlemen, um, what, what you've seen is that here's an opportunity um, you can say to your relatives or so if they want to get a level of um, assurance, um, the security car guard, the company, uh, the government to the constable force is in the process of rolling out some measures that is there to assist persons when they want to come back to the Caribbean, to Jamaica. I think it is important and I want to encourage persons to go home. You know, I, because I, I, Gregory, personally myself, I am a Ochi man, and uh, right. and nothing will stop me from going back to Ochi, no matter what, you know. And uh, right. and and as a result of that, I would like to know also that other persons wanting to go to Jamaica can have this level of assurance as well that if they want to sort of have this sort of next step level of assurance, they can go to private security firms like yourself. And and listen, I'm going to say this out. I'm going to say this out because somebody has said it. So. How can we trust the private security individuals within that private security firm, knowing that we have given and disclosed so much information to them? Well, Silburn, we are we are professionals, you know, and um, as I said, we are yes. we are reg we are regulated by a body, and um, you know, yes, I mean. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you, but we are we are professional people, and we have been recommended by some of the finest companies um, in Jamaica and overseas. We have done very good work, you know. So I would recommend Mackay yes. Security whenever people need from unarmed and armed guards to close protection officers. We are we are here for them, and we are confidential in whatever we do. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the assurance. And I also give you my assurance as well. Well, this is my mate, went to school together. I trust him 100%. And you can trust the company. And I know Jason as well, who is the, the top guy um, in regards to this company. I cannot vouch for another company. I only can vouch for one at this present moment. And, um, and Gregory, I want to thank you so much for coming on at such short notice as well. And, right. and uh, I, I'll take more of your details and, and let people... Um, can actually find yourselves and reach out to you directly. Right. As I said, you can look us up on um, the, our website is on you Google us and you'll find our website there and you can see what the services that we offer yes. and some of our um, close protection agents are posted on the site also. So let, let me just do something here. Let me just do something here. The company is, the company is, let's put it there. Mackay's, was it? Mackay Security. And M-A-C-K? M-C-K-A-Y. M-C-K-A-Y. 
security. Yep. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll, I'll give more details as well. Um, after we finish, I'll, I'll give more details as well. So, so Gregory, listen, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, let me, let, before, before you go, let me just check to see if there's any other questions. Uh, is Weston, is Weston in Jamaica or he's overseas? Is he in Jamaica? Is no, he's he? here. He, he's actually here. He's here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great topic. Do your, Carla Lewis, do your, do your due diligence. Very, repet very reputable company. Um, affordable is relative. That is, uh, yeah. It's affordable as long as they can maintain the financial costs. People will find they refuse to give some per some pertinent information so it will work. What is the lodge? What's the long term cost? Okay, okay. Go through these questions as well, um, Gregory. Yeah, go through some of the yeah, this, the, the feedback from persons and and sort of maybe respond to them directly. All right, buddy. Okay. Okay, and, and right. thanks for having me, so, Mr. Barn. It was great. Yeah, man. No problem. No problem. Enjoy Jamaica. I, I got sunshine over here as well, and I make sure you make sure you you um. You lift up the flag of England, okay? I, I, I am the World actually rooting for them. In a, I, I have predicted a Belgium-England final, you know, and England will win. Really? Okay, that's, that's yeah. good. That's good. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I was predicting, I was predicting the, the match yesterday to be 2-1. And, uh, and then my wife said, stop, stop talking about one. I said, okay, I revised it. I revised it. Um, for for love, <laughs> I upgraded it to for love. But <laughs> yeah. You know? So, but but I mean, it's it's. I, I believe in football, and I'm not a football fan that much. But it's only when it's a last minute thing, you know. And uh, I, I believe that there's a, there's luck in football as well. <laughs> oh yeah. <Ball laughs> when somebody hit a ball, you know. Yeah. The ball is wrong. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, well, but it has been listen, a pretty, it has been a pretty it exciting World Cup, though. It has been. It, it has been. It has been. And 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 you can come over for the for the celebration. Yeah, we're gonna have a three days of holidays in the UK. Oh my God! All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wish you the best of luck. I wish that England will, will win the World Cup. So, best of luck, eh? Okay. All right. Peace out. Take care, Gregory. All the best. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so thanks so much for Gregory for coming on. Um, I will be posting on the, on the details of McKay's um, company where you can actually tap into. Now, I, I would like to recap. I would like to recap. And one of the things that came out of the discussion with Gregory is this. I, I, I don't want this sort of discussion to be seen as if to say, crime is at a high level in Jamaica or crime is to the point whereby it is um, not under control. Um, the view from Gregory, who is working in this particular field, is that crime is somewhat getting under control, right? I, I choose this topic as a way to empower and to give more information to, to, to Jamaicans overseas that there are different ways how they can actually protect and secure themselves. Protect and secure yourselves also is by information, information that you have. As uh, Percival Latouch, when I had him on the other day, he mentioned about the family members, just like with uh, Rupert Francis, talk about who that you have in your close proximity. Um, we've heard that, the, the killing of the Andersons, apparently it's a person who was very close to the family or, or maybe some sort of, um, you know, what, what should I say, somebody who worked there or work at the family. And, and and as a result of that, the government of Jamaica, and as, as I recap, and for those who are asking, what is the government doing in regards to returning residents? It says the JCF is to implement measures to protect returning residents and re review unsolved cases. The Jamaica Constable of Force said it is to implement strategies and support systems to bolster the security and safety of returning residents. The move comes against the background of recent incidents of murders and other acts of violence against returning residents and complains that enough is not being done by JCF to protect these persons. And the measures are, one, to establish a service to background checks on requests of persons who returning residents wish to employ. So therefore, that means to say, when you're going to employ someone 
And if your mother or your father, or if you plan to go back, don't just employ anybody. Do a background check. We do it in the UK. We have CRB check and all these different check on persons. You know, unless you're an agency staff, you can get into a company very quick. But the agents will have done their, their vetting of yourself in advance. But these days now, people don't just start working in full time places like uh, local authorities or major companies. They have to go through this massive check. They even do credit check on persons, even though you're not going to work in any areas of, of dealing with money or, or so like that. So therefore, that is something that people need to apply and need to think about. Um, they talk about appointing a liaison officer in each police division to monitor and provide returning residents with timely feedback on policing matters. So therefore, I believe, just like with Neighbourhood Watch, uh, I am a Neighbourhood Watch coordinator for my street here in South London. And if there's any major thing happening, the police will ping across through the system, through the network, and email to the coordinators to say blah blah blah, ray ray ray. And I believe that is something which they are planning to do. Uh, meetings will be held regularly at the divisional level to enhance the sharing of important information. So therefore, the government through the police will be doing that through the Ministry of National Security. The Deputy Commissioner of Police in Charge of Crime, Selby, says there is to be a review of all unsolved crimes committed against returning residents. Right? And the last thing they're saying, the police are reminding returning residents to do their due diligence before entering into arrangements. As they say, this may minimize their risk of being exposed to persons who may be seeking to get close to them with the intention of victimizing them to financial or other gains. And listen, when you go to Jamaica as well and you come off at the airport, don't just give your, um, somebody will say, yeah, let, me give you a, let me give you a call or can I give you a call because you may be waiting on someone or whatever like that. Don't do those things, you know what I mean? Um, be yeah, very vigilant yeah. as well. It's just, it's just about being wise, you know? And, and what my colleague says, uh, Mr. Gregory, um, is saying, he's saying that this company offers the service of security. His company offers the service of, you know, if people want um, an escort. So you're going somewhere late in the night or so, and you want someone to pick you up back, uh, close protection, some of that, they offer that service. So therefore, they've got bespoke service. So therefore, they tailor it down. So it's not going to be like, a, B, C, D. They have a chat with you. They discuss things with you. If you want also to start to liaise with them before you make a move down, if you want to get a personal touch, if you believe that the, the diaspora link or the government link is not giving you that much, they can offer that service. And ladies and gentlemen, everything is at a cost. Let's be clear about that uh, as much as possible. So Mackay Security is there and is a leader in the business. And as I said, I, I vouch for McKay Company because I know the owners and I know Gregory who work with me, Western Gallimore, a friend there from school there, original Ochi man, straight out of Ochi. As I said, never burn your bridges. Keep your bridges very close, you know, as much as possible. Keep your bridges very close. Don't burn your bridges with the people from home. I hear many people all the while talking about Menago Bakayar, them people that eat it. Don't speak bad of Jamaicans. Don't speak bad of your home. Speak top of your home, even though there are things sometimes kind of bad. And I kid you not, the, the majority of persons in Jamaica are great law-abiding people. Just like in, in here with the knife crime in the UK. The majority of persons are law-abiding persons. You know, law-abiding persons. But you got a minority. A minority which is causing the havoc with the knife and gun crime. It's a minority. The beautiful boys are going to school. Excellent, excellent, excellent. In Jamaica, excellent people. Great people as much as possible. You know, we got our issues, but we got to stand and we got to see positive. So, so even though this may look as if, as as it started, that it is something that you know, crime and and uh, may look as if something negative, but it has turned out into something positive, empowering you. And please share this video with someone that you know as well as possible, as well. And Western Gallimore, as it stands, there are varied forms, you know, and ideas which the government is kept rolling out. So there are different ways that the government is actually rolling out things. So let me see if there's anything. And without further ado, I'm going to wrap up. And uh, and as someone says, they'll be singing the Queen when uh, <laughs> uh, there, there's a <clears throat> we'll be singing God Save the Queen. <clears throat> they'll be singing God Save the Queen. Well, I saw a video. Well, Western Gallimore says um, it's going to be a repeat of 1966. <clears throat> but I saw a video. I don't know if you saw the video. I saw a video of one Jamaican guy with a with a whole pun. A lick and I said, England, England. And they say, 
the, the, the star or the paper in Jamaica said, one degge degge England fan in Jamaica. But I'm seeing more here. I'm seeing Western Gallimore. I'm seeing Gregory as well, Forsyth. So, so Jamaica is actually building up there. Uh, late in the day, people are actually uh, maybe uh, wagoners, jumping on the bandwagon as well. You know, but what can I say? Let, let's, um, <clears throat> let's, let's, big up, let's big up Jamaica as well. And, and finally, before I go, as you know about the Solution Oriented Summit, which we did the other day, fantastic event, dealing with knife crime and all those sort of things. Um, August 5th at Crystal Palace Park, um, we're going to plan to have um, a, a marquee there, still dealing with the fine It's going to be August the 5th. Uh, Crystal Palace Park is something to do with the Jamaica Basic School Foundation. And the Jamaica Basic School Foundation is um, a, a charity that helps basic school back home in Jamaica. And we are hoping to have a marquee there. And that marquee will be talking on different issues. So therefore, someone is going to be talking about stop and search. Someone is going to talk about the... the atrocities in the trauma like a, a trauma specialist i'm going to speak on that about mothers single mothers and how they cope with um with the, the issue of knife crime a, a mother who has suffered the loss of a son with knife crime as well looking at expulsion someone to speak maybe 30 40 minutes on expulsion with some discussion as well so while they're having the food while they're having the party while they're celebrating I want to give some meat there. I want to give some meat, some information. So there could be <clears throat> from the time of 12 to 5 or so, you're going to have back-to-back -back speakers and then people can actually decide which one they want to go to as much as possible. People pay. They normally get into the venue there at the Jamaica Basic School Foundation and um, and then you just decide which one of the, the slots you want to go to. We'll hopefully have a, a list to see which one, which one you want to go to on Stop and Search on expulsion for boys, mm -hmm. uh, black fathers, where are they, are they missing or so? Different topics from special, is the church, is the church involved, what the church can do as much as possible, what is the police doing as well, you know, uh, the legal, one of the key things I found out at my last show was, uh, at the Solution Oriented Summit was the, the legal implication, what happens when they go into the courtroom, what happens when they go to court, what happened, the process there, I heard that some of them cry like baby. Some of these bad boys cry like baby, cry for their mama, you know, when they actually realize they're going down, they're going to prison as well. And the barrister speaks about when he look in the gallery, he's hardly seen any men, only mothers. And he have to ask the question, where are the fathers? Okay, so that's that's a part of the work which I'm doing as well. So 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 thank you so much for coming. Remember to like and subscribe the Silver and Show. Like and subscribe. I'm gonna put this up on YouTube as well, so you can actually share it much easier because of course some people don't go are not on YouTube, and uh, you can actually find out more uh, 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 about this whole thing. And I post Jason um, Jason's owner, but um, Gregory's detail as well, where you can actually get that information as well and support the company. Let's support our own, support Jamaica, you know what I mean, as much as possible. We've got Mark Shields gone to Jamaica, the policeman from Bridge Scotland, you know, and cutting up business. Let's support our own, all right? <laughs> you know, let's be patriotic to the cause as much as I say, because as Mackie is a top one, as my friends are saying. Okay, and uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Silver and TV, Silver and TV, Silver and TV. So enjoy your week and remember to come out and celebrate for England. As much as possible and feel proud of it you know and next day i'm going to talk on this when all of this is finished i'm going to talk on some serious question i'm going to put this question out there what is it about england that is positive that you like to black people and then i'm going to ask the next question another time what is it about england that you don't like because a lot of black people are here in this country but what i pick up sometimes is that many people hate this country but they live here and in the system so i really want to dig into at the same time what is it that you like and also what is it that you hate and uh, i believe there need to be some open discussion and some really openness about the whole thing uncomfortable issues but that's what i'm here about thank you very much have a good night and have a smashing week in this week of the world cup where it's all coming home to the uk I'm Silver and Sidiel, and I'm home. And Gregory, thank you so much for my case company. And um, you guys, Western Gallimere, thank you, buddy. Um, I just say, 
I to person Dean McEwan, respect Eric, um, Lana Foster, J.R. Nelson. Um, you know, thank you so much for coming. BDs, J.R. Nelson. Um, you know, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming, and thank you for coming, and have a good night. Thank you.